Hi, I'm Nate. I'm going to be going over some of the introduction into color sensor use with the LEGO Mindstorms EV3. This can be used for FLL competitions uh, or just messing around at home with your own uh, EV3 robot. So we're going to be going over both modes, reflective light intensity and color, uh, color mode on the color sensor. So the first mode we're going to be going over is reflective light intensity. So, uh, what is reflective light intensity? Let me show you. So, as you can see, my color sensor is plugged into port 3. So this is, um, you can see this icon right here, and it explains exactly what reflective light intensity is. So reflective light intensity means that the uh, color sensor is shining a light onto uh, whatever's underneath it, and the light is bouncing back up, and then, ref uh, and then going back into the color sensor. Now, Depending on the color of the uh, surface that the color sensor is hovering over top of, depending on the color, the color sensor will read back a different value. So look, normally black range, uh, black and white range from 0 to 100. So normally black is about around 0 to 10, and white is about uh, 60 to 100. So let's put my robot on a black surface. Let's see what happens. Oh, see, as you can see, my color sensor is reading zero. That's because uh, the light bouncing back up to the color sensor is very low because a black surface doesn't reflect much light back up. Now let's put my uh, robot on a white surface. See how it jumped up to 56? That's because white reflects a lot higher than all the other colors, and so uh, white will reflect a lot more light back up. And that's how you can measure the difference in colors on the field and know when to measure a, or when to follow a black line or a white line. So let me um, go over uh, color sensor programming for you. So uh, here's a program, a very basic program on how to follow a black line on the field. So what you're going to do is, let me explain this program block by block. So this program right here uh, is a motor rotation block. You can find that in the yellow section. It's right here. Okay? So what? Uh, these are the same block. The difference is you need to go into here and click reset and then set it to port B. See that's the same block now. So what this block does is it resets your motor. So uh, resets it to a position of zero rotations. So see how my B motor over here is negative 108 degrees? So that is um, a problem, actually. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're like following a line, you reset it to zero, because that way uh, you can measure accurately. So let me explain uh, what the rest of the program does. So you start with resetting your drive motor, and then this is a loop. Uh, let me show you what that looks like with the rest of it outside. So this is a loop, and what a loop is is means whatever's put inside this loop, it will uh, it will keep repeating that action until the loop is interrupted. So this is uh, this is how you control what interrupts the loop. So right here you can see I have it uh, I have it measured for motor rotations. And then I have it anything greater than one rotation. So what's going to interrupt the loop is when my robot drives forward one rotation. That means that whatever is inside the loop is going to stop repeating after my drive motor reaches one rotation. So let me bring this back inside for you. So now what you have is this inside that I just brought back inside is the color sensor fo line following program itself. This is what your um, your robot follows. This is uh, uh, this is like how to follow the line. Now, the reason it's inside the loop is because I'm saying follow the black line until uh, for one rotations. Follow the black line for one rotation, and then stop following the black line. That's what my program is doing right now. So, um, let me show you. Uh, let me explain what the color sensor, uh, th this, these blocks do right here in the middle of the loop. So this is a switch. This block right here is a switch. And I can show you, uh, basically a switch is this. Let me explain what a switch is. 
to switch is you put a function in the switch. Right now I have it set to a color sensor. And then um, you have to type in your values. So basically I have it set to color sensor and reflective light, light mode. See it color, color sensor, compare, reflective light intensity. So because my, uh, my black surface is zero and my white surface is about 55, what I'm going to do is set it to anything less than 30 because I want to follow the black line. So uh, if, it's, if, if the value is less than 30, then it should be a black surface, right? Because uh, white is 55, and so uh, 30 is less than 55, and so anything less than 30 should definitely be a uh, black, it, it should follow that surface, uh, the black line. So I have my 30, and I have my less than function right here, less than 30. So what this is saying is this is a switch and it's a logic block basically. So what a logic block does is it says true or false. So you, as you can see the check mark in the top of the box here. So in the top of the box that check mark means if, the, if that is true do this. And then this X in the bottom box says if it's false do this. So what you're saying is if it sees a, the black line do uh, turn uh, turn right and if it doesn't see the black line turn left and basically you're gonna end up with your robot zigzagging and uh, going forward across the black line but it's gonna end up staying in the middle between the black and uh, the black line and then the white outer uh, line that that surrounds the black line so your robots gonna sit in the middle of the two colors and then drive forward so that's actually good because um, it's a very smooth, this program uh, makes your robot drive along the line a lot smoother than the other basic EV3 uh, line following programs. And the reason is because in the top box here, you can see that um, I have a very slight turn. So you can see that I, uh, my, my power and my motors is just separating by uh, the value of 3% 3, 3 power. And so it's not really much of a, a difference, but that gives it just enough curve to curve left and curve right. And so you're not curving very sharply off the black and white line, but it's, it's enough to where it's going to end up following a lot faster and a lot smoother than, uh, say, the, the uh, introduction videos that are online to color sensor following. Now, um, let me just uh, go over basically what we learned. Uh, you would reset your motor rotation right here, make sure it's zero. Then your loop, you, you would put your loop, and inside you have a switch. Logic block, um, which the switch is a logic block. You say if, it's, if you see the black line, turn right, and if you don't see the black line, turn left. And that way it'll, it'll end up following the middle in between the black and white line. So, and then uh, how you stop your program, otherwise, if you, if you didn't have a... Uh, you should have a unlimited right here. This is what it's set to default. So that means it's going to keep following the line forever. Now, um, you want to you wanna obviously have a limitation on how far you follow a, a line, you would say. So I, I have it set to uh, port B, which is my drive motor, and anything uh, greater than one rotation. So I'll follow the line for one rotation. If I wanted to follow the line for, say, uh, 3.5 rotations, I'll just type in 3.5, and then when it reaches 3.5, anything uh, greater than 3.5, it'll just stop the whole program. So you'll stop following the line. Um, now, uh, the color mode on this that I, I discussed in the beginning of the video that we'd also be going over is extremely similar. So the only difference is, uh, the whole program's the same, the only difference is this, this uh, switch. So instead of setting it to color sensor, uh, compare and reflective light, you click color. Now, you have to keep in mind that you have to unclick the original color, which uh, default is red, and then you have to click the black, because you're following the black line. So, uh, also make sure that your port number in your, uh, in your color sensor is matching up with uh, the port that your, uh, your physical color sensor is plugged into your robot. Otherwise, you will see that it isn't working, and it's a very hard uh, sometimes it takes some time to troubleshoot. So, um, basically, it's uh, the rest of the program is the same. Uh, so let me go over what this is doing. You reset your drive motor, same thing there. Now, what you're saying is if you see a black line, 
turn right, and if you don't see the black line, turn left. So, why would it matter, like, between color mode or reflective light mode? What's the difference? So reflective light mode, you can measure a little bit more uh, like uh, color intensity. You can measure a little bit more, um, and it's a little more accurate with the, uh, the reflective light mode. The color mode still works very well in some situations, but there are some situations where, say, you might have like a green outer line or a green background. And so green reflects close to, like dark green reflects close to the amount of black, and so it might pick up the color black if you're using color mode and you have a green background. And so um, you might end up following like the green background instead of the black line. And that's when you would want to use reflective light intensity because it can measure those little details uh, between the colors. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe and uh, please feel free to leave a comment on the next uh, whether programming tutorial or uh, the next video for FLL that you would like me to um, post about, um, please feel free to uh, comment any any type of like programming or any type of function. Um, please subscribe, and uh, I'll be posting more videos weekly.